Welcome back to What Is Ken Doing? Today we're going to talk briefly about how to repair the transfer case motor on your NP246 transfer case. Be sure to have the vehicle safely jacked and supported before beginning work. If you're working from the ground, the only wheel that you need to jack up is the driver's side front. The first thing you'll have to do is remove the front drive shaft. Be sure to mark the yokes on both sides of the drive shaft to ensure that you can replace it in the exact location. In addition, the rear yoke that goes into the transfer case will have a rubber boot. If it's never been removed before, there'll be a clamp on both ends of the rubber boot. Simply clip the clamp off on the side of the boot that goes into the transfer case. Next, you'll locate the wiring harness that plugs into the transfer case motor and disconnect it from the body wiring harness. Now we're ready to remove the motor from the transfer case. You'll find three 15 millimeter bolts that hold the unit in. Once you have those three bolts removed, you're able to remove the motor from the transfer case. Gently rock the motor a couple of times back and forth and it will just pop off of the stud that sticks out of the transfer case. There's a black gasket that goes between the motor and the transfer case that has some orange rings on it. Be very careful with this because you don't want to damage those orange rings. Once you have the motor out and on the workbench, gently remove the gasket from the body of the motor. Use a marking pencil or a marker to put a line to indicate exactly where the position of the motor is in relation to its case. This is important because if you get things out of phase, the motor will not work correctly and could damage the transfer case. Using a T15 Torx, you'll find four screws that need to be removed. Two of them are on the body close to where you just put that mark. The other two are on the far left side where the motor solenoid sticks up. Do not bother to take the two screws out in the center of the housing. They are not needed to be removed. Once you have the screws removed from the housing, gently lift up on the housing and remove it from the body of the motor. Again with your marker, make a line to indicate the position of the two gears in relation to each other. You can see on mine that there is two black marks on the gears indicating that somebody has made a repair to this motor once before. Be aware that on the large gear you may find a spacer ring like I did. Note the direction that that is sitting and remove that and set it aside. Once you have that shim removed, gently lift the gear up and pull the wiring harness off of the sensor. There's no clips on this, it's just held in with tension. Once you have the gear removed, flip it over and you'll see the sensor that we're going to be replacing. The sensor only fits in one direction because there's a keyway that holds it in place. Just use your hand to pry the sensor off of the gear. And when you're replacing it, make sure that you put the new one in in the correct direction. I highly encourage you to only use AC Delco or genuine GM parts. Many of the aftermarket parts do not meet the correct specifications and may not have the correct amount of life in them, which means that you'll be doing this job far sooner than you should be. Be sure to compare the new part with the old part to make sure that everything is exactly the same so that you don't have any problems with the reinstallation process or the functioning of the transfer case motor. Once you're sure that you have the right part to install, simply push it onto the shaft of the gear and make sure that everything is fully seated in its proper position. Reattach the wiring harness and set the gear back in place making sure that the paint marks that you put on the gears are lined up correctly. 
Once you're sure that you have the gears phased correctly, reinstall the shim that we took out at the beginning. Be sure that the orange gasket that is in a groove on the housing cover is in the proper location and that there's no debris on the gasket which could cause a problem with moisture getting in. Carefully slide the housing cover back on top of the motor and reinstall the four screws in the locations that they were in originally. Remember that the two screws on the gear side are smaller than the two screws on the solenoid side. Reinstall the motor gasket and we're ready to put the motor back on the transfer case. Carefully position the motor back on the transfer case and make sure that everything is aligned correctly including the gear that goes on to the transfer case. Make sure that all of that is phased in properly before tightening your bolts. Reinstall the wiring harness. Now you're ready to reinstall your drive shaft, making sure that everything is phased in according to the paint marks that you put on it before you removed it. Be sure that the rubber boot is properly seated where the drive shaft goes into the transfer case. I took the old sensor apart and split it into its two pieces to see how everything works. It appears that there's a handful of fingers on the one side that make contact with some conductive rings on the other side and I think that what has happened is that those little fingers have worn out just over time and are not making proper connection which is causing the transfer case to go into the wrong range at random times. Once you have everything put back together and you've made sure that all of your bolts and screws are tight you're ready to put the truck back on the ground and cycle through your ranges on your transfer case in the appropriate manner. Be sure to test all the three ranges, two-wheel drive, four-wheel high, and four-wheel low to make sure that everything is functioning correctly. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.